Today on Hacktip, we are checking out your feedback and tips for Wireshark. This episode of Hacktip is brought to you by Atlassian. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I am Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out Wireshark with your tips and feedback because you guys are awesome and you send me amazing ideas. So it is our last episode about Wireshark. I know, it was awesome. Thank you for sticking around for so long and sorry about the break. <laughs> so it is time to wrap up the series with feedback from you guys. First off, let's start with some emails sent over to tips at hack5.org. The first one is from Oyvin Neslin who writes, I have a tip for how I've used Wireshark in my job as a network admin. We had a problem with IP phones in our DHCP server and ended up with address conflicts because two phones would use the same IP. To solve this and identify the phone, I used Wireshark and filtered on arp.duplicate tac address tac detected. This will give you all the duplicate addresses on your network and help me solve my problem. That's an awesome tip. Thank you so much. And you can find all the other filters related to address re resolution protocol or ARP over at wireshark.org slash doc slash dfref slash a slash arp.html. And our next email comes from Michael who writes, at one of our branch offices, users were having issues with internet connectivity. Sometimes okay, most of the times horrible. After verifying cabling and then settings on the router and workstations, I used Wireshark to see what was going on. Bingo, I found a rogue wireless router that was using its external IP address, which was on the office's internal network that conflicted with the office's default gateway. The packet capture sessions showed the ARP transactions between different MAC addresses with the same IP. Found the rogue router and cut the ethernet cable leading to the area it was located. With a, without a doubt, it fixed the issue. So as you can see, ARP issues are pretty common. I too have had a few issues with them. Wireshark makes it very, very easy to figure out what the heck is wrong on your network and solve an issue fairly quickly. So you can tell that a lot of people use this as network admins and in IT. And we also got a question from Taylor. He asks, does adding client FQDN as a column mean a way to read names people offer out? That's a good question, so let's find out. So I didn't see a column available to add, but I did find a filter. So you can run this filter through and see what happens. dhcpv6.client underscore FQDN. So it does end up being green because it is a correct filter. When you run this filter, and you'll see I didn't receive anything. Now when you run this, you'll notice in the packet header there is a new section for fully qualified domain name under DHCP version 6. Now in the use case scenario of my machine, it'll most likely end up being Shannon Windows 10 or a Shannon laptop. A fully qualified domain name or FQDN is the complete domain name for a specific computer, a host, or whatever it might be on the internet. Now, if we were scanning the Hack5 server, it would probably end up being www.hack5.org. The FQDN is the full host, which was, would be the www, and the domain name of hack5.org. Now you can find more info on that available on the RFC 4704 doc. Now let's go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. From genome mapping to renewable energy to space exploration or just planning your next team offsite, behind every great human achievement there is a team. So this big question is how do you bring everybody together to build what's next? The solution with Atlassian. Unleash your team's potential with Atlassian's collaboration software so you can work and communicate better together. You can assign, track, and manage tasks for any project no matter how complex. That's the clarity of Jira. You can create and share content. You can organize results and bring team members up to speed with the flexibility of Confluence. And you can instant message or video chat with your team from any device with the freedom of HipChat or <laughs> and or you can test, review, and manage code in real time with the power of Bitbucket. Atlassian is helping teams in every single industry from startups all the way up to enterprises turn great ideas into reality. I have used HipChat to video conference with colleagues in different parts of the country and it makes it super easy. You can go to Atlassian.com to learn more and see how Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket give your team everything you need to organize, discuss, and complete shared work. That's Atlassian.com. Unleash the potential in your team and build what's next. We are back 
with more feedback from you. Philip writes, hi Shannon, in Wireshark's filter bar, the expression ip.dst exclamation mark equals an IP address can generate issues. That's why it's highlighted in yellow. You may want to write something like not ip.dst equals equals with the IP address in parentheses or exclamation mark IP address equals IP address in parentheses, which will then appear in green in the filter bar. As said here, and he links us to an address in section 6.4.4, a common mistake. Best regards and tons of kisses from France to all the team. Thank you so much, Philip. And I'm going to go ahead and get on my computer and show you exactly how that works. First off, we have IP.dst exclamation mark equals and then the IP address. So this time we're going to make it 10.73. 31.74. So it ends up being yellow just like he said because it can generate unexpected results and it'll give you this little clue down here as to what you may expect to see happen. Instead, you can write not ip.dst equals equals 10.73.31.74 74, which will give you a green filter bar. Or you can write exclamation mark parentheses ip.address ADDR equals equals 10.73.31.74 or whatever the IP address might be. Close your parentheses and you receive the same thing. The link he is referring to is straight from Wireshark.org under 6.4.5 of this chapter. It describes a common mistake where the operator ip.address exclamation mark equals and then your IP will still unfortunately show where either source or destination IP address equals 1234. So it doesn't necessarily hide those. So again, thank you so much, Philip, for sharing that information. It's very useful. And lastly, from Crazy52, he says, I found a page with some examples to connect to Wireshark over SSH over at commandlinefood.com. I have a Raspberry Pi with a LAN tap monitoring my internet traffic over ETH0 and a USB Ethernet adapter connecting it back into my network. Using Windows with PuTTY plus Wireshark, I managed to get it to work with a command line. And if you want to check out commandlinefood.com, it is over right here and I'll put it in the show notes and he gives plenty of examples on how you can use Wireshark straight from your command. That is so cool. And it kind of brings me on to my next segment. So this brings me to my next series. I am going to be taking a look at TCP dump and some other options in the command line for Linux as well as Windows. We are going to start with the installation and some simple commands and then go from there and see what happens. So of course you can let me know what you think. You can send me a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show. Check out Hack5 hak5.org for more stuff just like this. I think we're building drones right now. It's pretty cool. Now I will be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. See you next time. One, three, two.